Hi, my name's Steve Parker and I'm one of the education officers working for Essex Fire and Rescue Service in Essex Police. And today I'm going to show you a short presentation about making a safer journey. Now young people, um, when they get to secondary school, often are making those independent journeys on their own. Now statistically, you're going to be more likely to be involved in a road accident um, uh, as a young person than at any other age. Children before the age of 12 are much, much less likely because usually you're with an adult. So what we're going to be talking about today is to understand the fire service's role in keeping people safe uh, on the roads and to make safer independent journeys by understanding the risk, reducing that risk and understanding the consequences if something happens to you uh, in a road traffic collision. So we call them RTCs in the fire service. I spent 30 years as an operational fire officer and one of the most um, upsetting things for a fire officer is when we go to buses, trains, lorries, cars with young people involved. Often those young people are seriously injured uh, or killed. And these KSI figures, killed or seriously injured figures, are shocking for young people. So we have 500 people a month in the UK who are being killed or seriously injured uh, in the young age category. So we'll watch uh, as a fire, the fire officers do some training here um, when they're trying to cut someone out of a vehicle. And, and what you need to understand with collisions with vehicles, often uh, pedestrians, particularly maybe underneath the vehicle, they could have gone through the windscreen, uh, they could be trapped um, between vehicles, um, and quite often, the drivers who swerve to avoid young people in the road, uh, be that on push bikes or pedestrians, often end up having collisions themselves. And on the fire engines, we carry various amounts of different pieces of equipment which allow us to cut those people out of those vehicles. Um, and they've got areas where the crews are working here in this particular scenario uh, with regarding uh, lorries and cars. Uh, so quite traumatic for both the firefighters and for the occupants. It's a very noisy atmosphere, uh, lots of people um, making decisions and we're working in close collaboration at these incidents with the police and ambulance service. Um, so it's just a short film there to make you aware um, of what we do when we turn up at a, a road traffic collision. Often the firefighters will only get called if someone's trapped but often the ones I've been to particularly are where those young people are often trapped underneath cars uh, or underneath uh, lorries. Okay? Um, so again, you can see some of the equipment here that we carry on the fire engines. Uh, these are called the Jaws of Life, large um, cutting uh, blades which we use for cutting um, through uh, cars and lorries. Uh, we've got hydraulic rams uh, that we can use as well. We also carry airbags and lots of uh, pneumatic uh, equipment to be able to access vehicles if people have been, have been injured. So we're going to have a little pedestrian safety quiz now to see how much you know about staying safe on the roads. So which age range is most likely to be killed or seriously injured in a road accident? So we've got below 5 years old, we've got 5 to 11 years old, we've got 12 to 19 and 20 to 29. So which one do you think uh, is most likely to be involved in an accident? Okay, now if you said uh, 12 to 19 year old, uh, then you were correct. And it is the single biggest killer of 12 to 19 year olds in the UK. So it's really important that you take this pedestrian uh, cycle safety uh, important. So as a 12 to 16 year old pedestrian, what time of the year are you most at risk? So we've got January and February, We've got June and July and we've got October and November. So what is it one of those you think that you're most likely to be uh, injured? Okay, if you said October to November, you were right. There's lots of different reasons for that. Um, we have the darker evenings coming in. So uh, it's often dark when you're going to and from school. And just by wearing something that is uh, bright, something that you can, uh, can be seen in, uh, is going to make a difference with that. Also, we've got inclement weather this time of year. So we've got the first of the snow and the ice. We've got a lot of rain uh, and that can make it more difficult for drivers to see what's going on um, when they're out and about. OK, so which day of the week is the most dangerous pedestrians aged between 12 and 16? So we've got Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Friday or Wednesday. So which day of the week do you think is the most dangerous? OK, well done if you said Friday. Lots of reasons behind this, but 
Um, when you're turning out of school on a Friday, you're going home, you're excited for the weekend, you're thinking about what you're going to be doing. And also the adults, they're leaving work, they've got their weekend, it's the end of the week. So you could take the perfect storm, couldn't you? You could take that evening in October, November time where it's raining, it's dark outside. Uh, you're 12 to 16 years old, it's a Friday afternoon, you're leaving school. Massive increase in risk in the likelihood of having an accident, okay? At what time is a fatal accident most likely to happen to a 12 to 16 year old? So if you've been listening to what I say, is it midnight to 2, 9 to 11, 8 till 10, or 3 till 5? Okay, 3 till 5. And that is because you are turning out of school and those cars are coming home, okay? Um, and I've been to numbers of accidents at this time of the day, even on nice sunny days, because I sit outside schools during my job uh, regularly, um, waiting for school gates to open at the end of a school day, and I often see those children coming out of schools, running in the road, crossing the road without looking uh, on their mobile devices uh, and other risk factors as well. Okay. Um, so, a quick awareness test here. Um, how many passes does the teen in white make? Okay. For those that got that, that's 13. It's not actually what we were looking for, because did you see the moonwalking bear? And I know the quality of the picture's not that great, but if you have a real close look, and I'll put my, uh, my red light on it, going across the middle of uh, the screen there, uh, you have got a, uh, someone uh, in a bear suit who's moonwalking across uh, the screen there. And that's just to prove that sometimes when you're concentrating, hey John, come to the park tonight, and you're talking to someone across the road, or you're in a situation where you're involved in a conversation, maybe on the phone, or you're listening to music, um, you can be distracted enough that you actually miss the car, or you miss the fact that uh, you're walking in the road, okay? So this is uh, a um, fatal car accident that happened in October 2007. A young boy called uh, Jason Body, he actually got killed, he was 14 years of age. Um, the car driver, wasn't under the influence of drugs, alcohol, they weren't speeding. Uh, the young person, you can see the skid marks here on the road. Uh, there's a bus stopped here. A young person got off all behind here and got hit by the car. And the consequences of something like this uh, are quite widespread. Not just for poor Jason, who unfortunately lost his life, but for his friends, his family, his parents, the emergency services who attended, um, and the wider community, the car driver specifically, especially if they're not doing anything uh, illegal, um, the ramifications of that can go on for years and years and cause a lot of uh, post-traumatic stress. So um, the questions you need to ask yourself, even in an accident, is who is affected and why? And when someone is uh, killed or seriously injured, seriously injured often means that they can be disabled, uh, they could have life-changing injuries, which means that maybe one of your parents has to give up work, um, the house may need to be adapted to take um, disabled uh, wheelchair access, etc. All these things affect the wider family. It's not just about you getting hit by the car and injured. Um, what could have been done differently? Could he have crossed the road? Could he have waited to go to a safe place to cross? Um, if, if someone was putting pressure on you to get somewhere quickly, could that perhaps pressure have been removed? Um, and who would you feel would be responsible? Should they feel responsible? Who would be responsible? Okay, if the driver was under the influence of drugs and alcohol and the car wasn't MOT'd and taxed, is that the driver's fault that you've run out in the road? Or is it the fact that you're in a road and that road needs to be treated with respect, okay? So when we're out and about, it is important to look for a safe place to cross. Now I know young people will cross where it's most convenient for them. Why am I gonna walk 20 seconds down the road to a, a crossing when I can just cross here? And that often is between cars, on junctions of roads, or on junctions where cars are turning left, on browser hills. And I see this time again outside schools as well. Uh, take the opportunity and the time to go to the crossing. Often there'll be teachers uh, allocated on those crossings. 
when I'm out in my own vehicle and I get to a, a, a road, quite often I'll see kids running across the road. They leave someone on the other side, they then turn around and talk to their friends because they have been sensible and waited for that pedestrian crossing to turn green. Okay. So can we name the crossings then? So this is the first one here, and I'm sure you all know this one. Um, this is a zebra crossing. Now, one of the things you need to know with these is there's no traffic lights. You have the Belisha beacons on each side and the zigzag lines leading up to it. These staggered lines here are stop lines, and that is where the vehicle needs to stop if you're on the crossing. What that doesn't mean is if you've got a car coming down the road at 30 miles an hour, that you walk out on that crossing because that driver has got to stop. Now, unfortunately, in my service, we were parked in a fire engine waiting for some people to cross, and... Uh, a young lady uh, crossed the road with some young children and the car didn't see her uh, crossing. The sun was in their eyes and they actually ran all over the children and, and, the, and the mother uh, right in front of us. Okay, So we were first on the scene to that. And what I'm trying to get across with that story is the fact that those lines are not a, a massive wall. It is a set of lines in the road and cars do go over them. So please wait at the side, wait at the junction for the cars to stop on the line before you cross and as you cross just a short gesture there to thank the driver for taking the time to stop for you uh, never goes um, uh, unheeded okay so that is your zebra crossing the next one we're going to talk about uh, up here is your pelican crossing now a pelican crossing um, has got the uh, green man to tell you it is operated by a set of traffic lights and it is one of the only crossings which will actually have the orange flashing light to say that it's uh, still safe to cross and to allow drivers to know uh, when, they're, when they're going to be able to drive away. Um, sometimes these can be called puffing crossings and that's when it's got a sensor and the lights will stay red for longer if there's people waiting. But the most general ones you'll see are the pelican crossings with a button that you push um, uh, to make sure that you can cross the road safely. Um, the other sort of crossings that we have, this is called a toucan crossing, um, and the easy way to remember this is toucan cross at one time, and that is usually outside parks or on cycle lanes, because it means that bikes and pedestrians can cross, again no flashing orange lights with them, just your uh, green and red lights. And the last one um, is the uh, crossing for the uh, horse riders, and they will often have a... Um, higher um, button to be pushed for the uh, horse riders and um, these are called Pegasus crossings and they allow horse riders to cross the road as well. So numbers of different crossings that you might come across when you're out and about but always good to use one of those crossings rather than trying to cross somewhere uh, which is unsafe. Okay. Now most of you have done the Green Cross Code, you probably did a fair bit about, about it at primary school. Stop, look, listen, think. Okay. Always find the safest place to cross. And most generally that will be at a crossing, uh, but make sure you're away from junctions and from blind corners. Stop but just before you get to the curb. Look all around for traffic and listen. If traffic is coming, let it pass. And when it's safe, go straight across the uh, road. Do not run. Again, important, earphones out, mobile phone in your pocket. Take the time to cross the road properly without any of those distractions. And also be wary of electric cars. Um, over the past year, I've noticed some of them are almost silent, so it isn't just about listening out now. You do need to look both ways to make sure before you cross the road. Okay. So we've got a massive problem with mobile phones. Now, when I come out of schools most evenings when I'm working, uh, teaching for the fire service and police there, I see young people concentrating on their phones, often with earphones in, and unfortunately I was at an incident recently where a young person walked out in front of a car when they was on their phone uh, straight outside of school. Very, very upset in those 20 minutes waiting for the ambulance. The guy was quite seriously injured. He did pull through, but it does happen more and more outside schools. And the schools that I deal with are saying that they are now putting teachers outside schools to remind pupils to keep off their phones while they're crossing the road. So it is really important uh, to be able to hear and to see what you're doing. And there is some quite shocking footage uh, of young people uh, being injured in accidents because of their mobile phones, okay? So don't dis get distracted while crossing. Please don't use your devices while crossing the road. Uh, music and headphones, especially if you're on a bicycle as well. I often see kids cycling around. It takes away one of your main 
uh, ways of, of, of listening out for danger if you've uh, got your headphones in. And don't get distracted by friends when crossing the road, okay? Okay, brings us on to seatbelts in cars. You, most of you have grown up wearing seatbelts um, right from an early age, um, and you always put them on. As you start getting a little bit older uh, and you start making those independent journeys, perhaps one of your friends has passed their test for the first time, you're at a party, you've got no money, it's late, you need to get home, go on, jump in the back. I know there's only three seats and there's five of us, just sit on someone's lap, it'll be fine. Again, in my career, I've had a lot of very nasty incidents when people are not strapped into their car. That seat belt is designed to keep you in that safety cab, to stop you getting thrown out of the vehicle or to kill other people within the car. Because if you're not wearing a seat belt in the back of a vehicle, then there's a good chance that you're going to go forward and perhaps kill someone in the front. Uh, and if you're in the front with that seat belt on, there's a good chance you're going to end up on the road. Uh, and I've seen that many times in my career as well. So in a cr crash, you're twice as likely to die if you don't wear your seat belt. Uh, child seats should be used until the age of 12 or upon reaching 135 centimetres, whichever comes first. You can get an on-the-spot fine of £100 for not wearing a seat belt. Uh, I can assure you, if you get involved in an accident without a seatbelt on, uh, £100 uh, is, is not going to is not going to cut it, okay? Because you are going to get seriously injured. Anyone 14 years and above is responsible for wearing their seatbelt, uh, and it's the driver's responsibility for anyone under 14. A technical fine can be up to £500, and even pets, pets must be suitably restrained in a vehicle to prevent injury. And the reason that is, is, is anything in a car which flies around within that car during an accident can potentially, uh, has the potential to kill you, okay? So uh, even large boxes, um, but you often see cars full up with stuff in the back. If you have an accident, there's a good chance that that's going to come forward and cause someone some damage. So when it's li most likely to happen to you is not when you're in your, uh, in your car with your parents, but when you're out with your friends, when you first start driving, when you've got that opportunity to perhaps get a lift. Uh, when perhaps other people aren't wearing seatbelts, a bit of peer pressure there. But I can assure you I could spend the next hour telling you about accidents I've been to where people's lives have been saved because they've been wearing a seatbelt. Okay, um, mobile phones. Um, if we stood outside this fire station today, within 10 minutes I'll see someone using a mobile phone going past. Uh, mobile phones uh, are the leading causes of accidents now uh, for car drivers. Um, so again, if you're in a vehicle and someone's using a phone, you have the right to ask them to stop using it. A lot of the newer phones now comes up on there uh, that you're driving and you have to actually have to bypass that to access the messages. Okay, um, so with your mobile phones, um, it's illegal to use those. This includes using your phone to follow a map, read a text or check social media. This applies even if you're stopped at traffic lights or queuing in traffic, okay? Uh, using hands-free, okay, so for navigation, is not illegal. However, if it distracts you and affects your ability to drive, you can still be prosecuted. You're four times, this is that like four times more likely to die in a crash uh, if you're using a mobile phone. Reaction times are 50% slower. And we know that because the fire service, we have got driving simulators where we can simulate people talking on phones and being distracted. And even good drivers, their reaction times uh, slow dramatically. And the law has recently changed, and you, if you're caught using your phone, you'll get six points. So it used to be three, uh, we've doubled it to six, and yet still people aren't listening. And just remember, if you do get um, those six points in the first few years of driving, it could mean you need to retake the test. So early on, if you're in your car driving, leave your phone in the glove box, perhaps turn it off, that's going to be the safer way forward. Okay, bikeability. Uh, safety on your bike. Now, when you was at primary school, <coughs> you may well have done <coughs> excuse me, your uh, one and two bikeability awards. A lot of people don't know that you can also go on at secondary school and do your level three bikeability. And a lot of schools do that, so if it's something you fancy doing, please go out uh, and approach your school or your uh, local youth network to see if they will do your bikeability three. Um, big craze at the moment for kids going out doing wheelies on bikes. A lot of those uh, I see out my personally on the films I've seen online, no helmet. Okay, Again, from personal experience, going to uh, road traffic collisions involving push bikes, if your head hits that concrete, your head's going to come off worse. Okay, So please, please put on your helmet when you go out there, even a, a slow speed fall from a push bike. And those kids that are weaving in and out of cars doing wheelies is extremely dangerous. We have lost a number of children in this country already. Uh, please make sure you're not one of those. Okay, be sensible, put your helmet on, and maybe take the opportunity to take your advanced bikeability level three. Okay, 
Thanks for listening. Um, it is important, you know your age group, if you're watching this, um, that is a leading cause of uh, young people getting killed. Be careful on your mobile phones. Be careful where you cross. Use those crossings uh, sensibly and always wear that helmet on your bike. This is Steve Parker for Essex Fire and Rescue Service and Essex Police. Thank you very much.